you see guys? Oh, okay. Good evening, everyone. This is the Chroma Board Workshop. Today is Thursday, May 25th. I will call this meeting to order at 5.30. Um, just for record, this was called due to two directors, Jim and Jared, uh, calling this a special meeting as dictated under our charter. So just wanted to put that out there. So Lauren has a meeting that properly noticed. It has been properly noticed. Do we have a quorum? We do not have a quorum. Okay. Do you mind outlining who's missing? Uh, David Anderson, Cindy Swisher, Celia McFadden, and Bill Brindle are not present. Great. Thank you. All right. So, um, do we want to outline what we can and can't do so without you, a quorum? You can have general discussion without a quorum, but you can't make any decisions. Okay. All right. Good. Yep. All right. Um, so, we have the meeting called to order. I will entertain a motion to adopt the agenda. I'll motion with changes. Second. I will second. All in favor? Well, oh, wait, 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 no, we yeah. want to change it. Oh, I'm sorry. Good. All right. We need to change it. I'm yes. Okay, so. You can't really even motion to adopt the agenda because you don't have quorum. So we're just going to just go. You're just using this as your guideline. If okay. Right. All right. Then Using we're going to skip over board alignment. Okay. Because not all here. The board alignment, we're striking A, board function and culture. I don't think that that is something that needs to be discussed between the three of us. Okay. Can you speak a little louder, please? Yes. So we've struck in A and B, board alignment and board function and culture, because we have three out of seven tonight. You know, these are not applicable. Uh, do, 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 do. C, we talked about communication, consistency, accountability, or development F. Yeah, we can strike F as well. Right. We've got communication, consistency, and accountability, meeting prep, master planning, next steps. Good? Yes. Alrighty. Okay, so we have two hours together tonight. And what this is is basically just a round the room, round table, friendly discussion. We're going to keep it respectful from this side. And uh, we don't have a timer up, there's not going to be three minutes. Uh, imposed on, on y'all. Come up, talk to us. We're just going to have a good some important topics that we think are going on in the community, some different pain points, what we can do better, etc. Um, so I'm going to turn it over to Jared to facilitate the meeting. I'm going to be watching the clock and making sure we kind of stay within our, our two hours and land the plane on time. So uh, Jared, pick it up. Yeah, I so the so if we're essentially into the second half of this meeting, I think a lot of this is just like a, like you said, roundtable discussion. And so this is, please feel free to raise your hand and interject at any point about any of the topics that we're talking about, because that's a big point of this is to get feedback. Um, com with starting with communication as something that we need to focus on. Uh, I think our community has gotten better. We've added ways to communicate with the community. Um, there are some board communications that I think need improved, but that's not necessarily for this discussion. Is there any any feedback on communication from 
attendees online or attendees in the room? Is there anything we can be doing better? Is there something that's working really well? Yeah, and again, like this is, you know, just let it out there, right? What are we doing well? What are we not doing well? Where can we improve? Think about communication channels, think about messaging. Obviously, the communications advisor did, did a lot of really great work last year. So that's a great frame of reference too. Um, but you know, where are we kind of in the current state? Where do we need to get to? And just basically around kind of our communications. Fair. All right. So what maybe we'll do is maybe we'll do in person first and then we'll yeah. kind of stagger it. So we'll do in person and then online. Does that sound fair? Good. Okay. All right. So all right. So Gary. That's good. Did you want to talk communications? No. no. Okay. Anyone online want to talk communications? Oh, Jill. I'll make a, I'm, I'm here. I'll make a comment. Yeah, yeah. Um, I would like to say I very much appreciate the Friday flash being broken out into two sections where we get some stuff on Friday and different information on uh, today. It's really useful to be able to see the information that way and and to get the communication on what's specifically happening like events wise and what's happening that I need to pay attention to as far as meetings and things like that. So that much I very much appreciate that has been broken out. It was getting a little unwieldy in just the Friday flash. So. Okay, good. That's that's good. Yeah, that's I, I would add that I would like to see perhaps an official Facebook group sponsored by the town, run by the communications group or whatever. That's where we all meet. That's where we all talk. That's where real time conversation happens. Whether or not people want to use it, that's up to them. But we have multiple unofficial Facebook groups. We have an official town hall page. But why do we not have an official Facebook group where you have to provide your, you know, an ID to say, hey, I live in the town. It can be managed. I run a I run a freaking running skirt group with 5,000 people in it, and we manage it just fine. So I don't see why the town can't utilize that form of communication as well. So John Greenberg, I'm the technology chair for Celebration. Uh, I was on the board, I was in committee last year, and again this year I'm the chairperson. So we've been discussing that. First of all, I'm not on Facebook. I know a lot of people refuse to be on Facebook. Right? And that's absolutely cool. So, but I'm, and, it is entertainment for a lot of people in this town, the Facebook page. So I'm with you on that. Uh, we've looked sell a service. Our old app that we had was was taken down. Jose has been working on that to get that back. We're working on another application, but communications and technology, I think are key to be able to communicate with people in our town. And we are going to work on that. So any feedback around that, and I've we would love. I've been here long enough that I remember when we actually had forums mm -hmm. on yeah. the 34747 page. And they were highly utilized, yeah. but when they kind of got hacked a few times and then broken, we all migrated to Facebook because it was the way that we could have sort of instant communications with people, but not like, you know, we sit next to you chat. Yeah, so when Jose and I have been meeting for a year now. A lot of the information from the previous website, and it's been a lot of work on the website the last six months. A lot of the information from the previous management company that was brought over, there was no security around things. Things were all over the place. It was really a mess where a lot of this stuff was. So we reported multiple security yeah, issues. Yeah. Yeah. Even where passwords were, like people didn't even know where a password was. Other than pasty notes on people's desks, like they weren't even kept securely in place. And so all that's being addressed. That's fantastic feedback. We really appreciate that. And that's one thing that's been my our agenda for information. Well, I look forward to there actually being a, an official way that we can communicate semi real time. Okay, so yeah, we'll go online. online. We have three people online. Can we go back and forth? Yeah, yeah, let's so. Shelly was the first one with her hand up. Oh, okay. So, Shelly. Hi, guys, it's Shelly from 1121 Indigo. So, I wasn't quite sure what fell under communications, but Piggy backing on what the other lady was just saying about the communications on Facebook or a real Facebook page. It's my understanding that Town Hall has the Facebook page. But to for what I want to say is that there are members of the board that don't believe in social media and don't believe in social media as a way to communicate. So I think that that in and of itself has to change before we try to communicate in any way on any social media platform. Thank you, Shelley. Can we? 
before we go back in person, I know I see Shelly, can you turn your camera off? Oh, sorry, my little thingy is covering my. Well, I could. Somehow. Oh, there we Thank go. Thank you, Shelly. Hi, guys. Hi, Shelly. <laughs> Um, so real quick, I see Janine and Krista, and I just I want to acknowledge them because they were representatives of the communications advisory group. So just before we go back in person, Janine or Krista, do you have anything maybe to add about that around maybe Facebook or social media? Because I know you had a plethora of recommendations around social media, and I don't mean to put you on the spot, but anything you want to maybe add there, any color? Um, yeah, I can add a little bit of color. So we, in the packet that we had presented to the board, um, had about a page and a half of guidelines surrounding um, best practices on social media, including like multi-channel communications. We didn't put anything specific in there about um, actually the development of a Facebook group that Town Hall would create. However, some of the recent things that have been posted on the master Facebook page for Town Hall, which are very much communications that are for the community versus the general public are things that should be better gated. And so I think not speaking for the entire committee, but speaking as someone who works in social media management, I would think that that would be a great idea at this point. If we're going to be sending out a lot of things, especially with this referendum, that should not be on a public facing page, but rather inside of a gated group. Perfect, thank you. Krista, anything you wanted to add? Sorry, I wanted to give you both a little time because there was a ton of work put into that. Wanted to give you time to <laughs> I would echo what Janine says. I'm in a loud environment right now. So, yeah. yeah. All right. Also, thank you guys for um, the shout out. We appreciate it. A lot of work went into the recommendations, and we're hopeful still that some of them are taken into consideration by those of you who are currently there. No, we appreciate it, and we'll turn it back in person. But I think also part of the reason why we're here today is we're getting ready at some point to have a strategic session, and we'll be at least I talked about it. As we start going into that session, we start going into the budget discussions. We need to know these things, the communication pain points, technology pain points, because that helps to inform the budget. So do we need to allocate funding for X or Y, or do we need to deploy certain resources? So these are really critical conversations that we're having. So thank you. I think so far it's been really great. Next online. Or we need to, want to yeah, let's go in person. I'm sorry. Did, I never talked. I live at 905 Beak Street. Um, email annoys me, so I don't read your flight. Friday flash. I like uh, social media, but why can't when we have important meetings, you just send us a text message and remind us that there's an important meeting coming up and maybe we should attend. We don't, you don't have to make it long or anything like that. If you got everybody's email address, perhaps you have everybody's phone number and a text message would be an easy, quick way of doing it. There is a genuine about GoGov or something similar because we there's more, there's early discussion about that. You I know we are doing some texting now. So do you we want have to talk capability about? to do texting via Serenet? Um, okay. It's if you opt into the texting is the first piece. We still don't have a probably only have about sixty percent participation in the Serenet resident portal. So you can't opt into texting or emails from Serenet unless you have a resident portal ID. Um, so that's one tripping point there. Um, we do push notifications from Cellus Service right now, um, but that's usually around kind of amenity closures just to get it out there quick and short. Um, so we can start pushing the text message notifications from Serenet um, without adding any additional new technology, um, but it's just something that you're not going to reach the same number of people that you are via Friday Flash, Monday Matters, and Service and maybe we can put something in the Friday Flash or the Monday Matters about how to. I'm not signed up for texting service, so so yeah. I I will do that. The K-8 school uses both. You get a, a text message and an email. Like yesterday, the kids were held for an hour and the day before. Both were sent out to hold. Ready to hear. So it's great, and again, it's preference, right? Text message, email, right? Well, email. having multiple options just gives yeah. everybody the way to pick. What, right. the way they want to be communicated to best. Yeah, yeah. And I won't speak full well. We, yeah. have, we have three people here, but I, I think the communications advisory here, you know, last year, kind of the genesis for it, I recommend that they put together actually a, a, a committee. Like, I think there's actually a need to have that, like a longstanding committee that actually makes those recommendations. I agree. And so uh, maybe that's something we can talk about as a board at some point. Yeah. Um, as we go into strategic discussions. And David, I know, has been um, an advocate for communications also. 
Laura Simpson was your next online person. Hi, this is Laura uh, Simpson, 600 Golf Park Drive. First of all, I want to thank you for hosting meetings online, which to me is part of the communication. Right now you have 17 people online. Last night you had over 100, which I know there were more online than in that room. And I really, really do appreciate that in our busy lives. But I would like to say more importantly to improve communication, you really need to up your game on your communication for these online. The members that are on the uh, committee right now sound like they're underwater. Lauren's the only mic I can hear. And it's way hard to see you at the camera because you're using Teams. And if you could go back to using Zoom where people don't have to be totally tech people to set it up in their homes, um, so much so that Teams is a corporate software where Zoom is much friendlier and I think more people would have less challenges. But most importantly, when you put the podium up, that whatever mic you put there, it's very hard to hear. It sounds like people are underwater. And with technology being one of the cornerstones of this town, I find it really upsetting that our Teams meetings are hard to understand and also um, hard to hear. So I think that would really, really help. Um, so that's my suggestion for improving communications, because I think more people now are watching from online or participating from online. And I think it would be important in the beginning of your meetings to, or even middle, because people come in a little bit late because they're working, to let you go know or let the board members know that aren't technological, how many people have eyes on them or how many people are listening. Great suggestions. Um, I know that um, the technology committee it's going to start working to evaluate that with Jose from management, and uh, we we realize there are some challenges around that, and uh, we try to make improvements. I know that new microphones are on the list somewhere too at some point for this purpose here. So all of that is good feedback. Yes. Yeah, and the camera is so far away. Your eyes look like the size of an ant, really. I mean, I can't even see your faces. Don't even know who's speaking. So it's it's really not a um, great forum to sit home and do this, but th sometimes that's all you can do because of your schedule. So if we are gonna be high tech, which I thought technology is a cornerstone, I just think we have to really address this better. Thank you, Viva. Yeah, Thank take you. one more. I just wanted to comment on, sure. on her follow-up with that. Um, I, I mean, I've been watching the, the past board meetings and that is something that she just said, which is, you know, the camera's so far away, you can't tell who's speaking. Yep. And it's like, mm -hmm. I'm like, I don't know who's saying what at this point, you know, and I'm until watching. Until you board. learn voices, you don't know which yeah. of the board members yeah. is speaking. That's yeah, there's just, you know, it's uh, a big step up to have a, yeah. more of a professional one with lower thirds and things like that, as any of you are involved in media know. Um, but we're trying we to squeeze one. 20 people into one, one screen of one user screen. But if you use so Zoom, you see who's speaking, you have their name underneath, you can actually see what's going on. And also whoever, you can set your whole thing up at home for who's ever speaking, have the camera zoom into them. Um, that would be so helpful because I usually don't know who's speaking and can't even see you guys very clearly. Um, yeah, someone to oh, yes. And with Zoom, Charles and Jim and, and Jared, um, you could each have your own devices and be logged in. We can do that so, here. Okay, because we do that during board meetings. Yeah, yeah, because, because that camera things. angle is horrid. Yeah. yeah. Oh, we, I think we all we all agree with that. Okay. Everyone. Yeah. We've been testing out the owl and life size as other options yeah. for, but we have not done anything to this room because See? of the. Yeah. Plus, I can see up your nose that way. That's yeah, I know, right? I'll get a lot of nose hair comments. We keep it light. We keep it light. Um, uh, one more line. Andrew? Uh, it was Andrew. Andrew. Yeah, good afternoon. Andrew, Seven Mosaic. Uh, yeah, I guess positive is I think uh, the Monday and Friday frequency of emails and communication is good. And I think that's fine to continue doing that. Maybe the, the method, like people have said, there's a better way to go about it or there's a different opportunity for that. Um, second would be, not sure if this fits in, but I know the website has improved substantially. And I think that's from Krista Thompson and team and everyone working on that, but still plenty of links that seem to be broken and things of that nature. So as a tool to, to find information or understand certain things, 
uh, continue to to make sure that that's being worked on so we have a fully functional website. Yeah, I can say I saw a version of the website a few weeks ago that was getting it from Grand Manners is doing a lot behind the scenes to get the website where it needs to be and sharing that with with us. There was the first step, which is almost complete, was getting the website from what it was to what it should have been. And visually, that will look no different. So that, that's a frustrating part from a user standpoint, but from a security standpoint and from a functionality standpoint, the errors will go away. All the pages will be secure. Everything will link properly. It will all look the same, so nobody will notice. It will just stop being broken. So it's a very positive thing. It's just not so apparent. Yeah, and the, the handover from the previous vendor to the current vendor did not go well in terms of content. Uh, and so a lot of this stuff is having to be loaded up and linked uh, manually. It's not just turning things back on. Um, so I'm sure uh, Jose and, and uh, the tech committee would appreciate your patience. But uh, when I say patience, I don't mean uh, don't give us feedback. Give us feedback. Yeah, keep Let saying what doesn't work. And... Uh, we want to know what you're missing that, that, that you want to have there and uh, readily available to you. And then once once that's done and there's a working website, then it will be the revamp of fixing the content and making things easier to find and a new sort of visual design. Is it? I don't want to put you on the spot. Is there a timeline for the first part being done where all the links? Freshy Sites is now working on the back end on the comments that they received from Krista and Jose on their last round of go through on the back end, and then we are working with them on what they are fully going to migrate over versus what the staff is going to have to migrate over in terms of content. Okay. Right now, the recommendation we're going to bring to the board is everything under the community governance tab, they migrate for us. So it'll be done and ready to go because there are fewer links on the rest of the site combined other than that one. And we can put the staff on that one and update. I was on the call last week with Freshie and Jose and Krista. So there's over a hundred web pages, over a thousand links that the developer doesn't know if it's a valid or not the information. So Krista had such an amazing job. We're going through that line by line, page by page, make sure the data is accurate. And then you go back and tell the developer this is right, this is wrong. So there's a lot of tedious work behind that to make sure it's correct. So did we let the person in who said it's me, I'm the problem, it's me, and I want to know if that is actually Taylor Swift? Uh, <laughs> they hung up. Yeah. Any other closing comments or communications? Yes. I, I leave bar 1138, Jose, John. I would love to see, and I'm not sure whether this belongs better here under communications or a little further on under me types of meetings. But I would love to see the kind of meeting that we're having now uh, where members of the community have real interactive ability meeting with the board. Um, I, I think that has started to decline drastically over the last couple of years. And um, I would just like to see a return. I think it's a, a very, very valuable piece of the puzzle. One other small piece of communication, but it is communication, is that we really need to redo our map. Um, we don't, you know, if somebody comes into the community and says, what is, is there a map? Did I miss that? Is there, a, you know, it's yeah. already done. We're just going over it for final publication. Thank you. <laughs> and to your first point, I, management had a recommendation that we should consider two meetings a month. I strongly support that because I think there should be, this is my opinion as an individual board member, I think there should be one meeting that is very similar to this, where we can kind of talk about the things we're going to be voting on at the board meeting, we can get feedback, then we have a week or two to think about that, and then we vote on it, everybody knows, everybody has an opportunity to know what we're talking about, and we can move the board meeting faster, so that makes those meetings not go over two hours, because there's some background and education on that, so yeah. I, I agree. Yeah, and I think, it, I mean, it's a shame we're not all here, the full seven, but I think just, and yesterday, was a little frustrating, just to be honest. I think we need to talk about efficiency. Like, how do we move between agenda items quickly and efficiently? Charles, what, one more point of communication yes. technology. I think it's frustrating for a lot of the parents who are heavily involved in our town. 
A lot of our facilities are used by partner programs from outside nine residents coming into our town. This past Saturday, all day, the volleyball courts were used by a sand tennis group. Then an event, they, they, they rented it, they paid their insurance. Okay. But if you have your family and you want to go play volleyball, it's good to know you can go look somewhere that the court's not available like that. If I want to go play tennis downtown, there's tons of lessons out there by outside people. The basketball courts are full with outside residents, both cell and nation. They are not residents. They have the court trees that are they're throwing our kids off. The pools are being, all our facilities have outside residents using our facilities and partner programs. To have a place where we can see when the courts are available, when they're not being rented, I think is also communication that's important to everybody. Yeah, and I think we'll cover that probably after the planning yeah. to a certain extent. Um, just in the interest of kind of moving us along, do we want Yeah, to I think we can move on from this. Okay. One thing I do want to ask is if we get in the room, if you can raise your hands, just so we're not interrupting each other. I know it's conversational, but if we're talking over each other and we don't have a way to get to the next person. So far, we're doing well. Yeah. I'll say on the reservation of amenities, owner has a piece of that that we're trying yeah. to roll out the parks and rec that will help with visibility with that, but still doesn't address the yeah. Right. Yeah. And just real quick before we move on, if we didn't get to you and you have something else, send it to the board email, please. So yeah, I will say someone asked me, I don't know if it was by, I don't know how, what the communication method was. Someone asked me today, does the board read all their emails? And I think I, I can speak for all seven of us that we all read every email. I, the responses and how that happens is a different thing, but everybody does read it. 100%. There are a lot of emails. There are a lot of emails recently. They keep them coming. Yeah, please do. That's, what that's, how we get better. that's how we get better. We um, and there were some people online that said that they're having problems hearing. I think some of the people in the audience. So I went over and, and talked to one and maybe I know this is a pain, but maybe every once in a while, especially if you don't have a strong voice like John, um, you can <laughs> come up to the mic. Thanks. All right. Consistency and accountability. The consistency here. and accountability is maybe one of the topics that was for all seven of us. Um, okay. Some of that was about um, efficiency in our board meetings. And, um, so I, unfortunately, I just don't think that's a relevant topic for the, this group. Okay, we'll strike that, unfortunately. Um, meeting preparation, again, I assume. Yes, we kind of talked about that a little bit in terms of one, meeting a month it yeah. doesn't suffice it may not even suffice from a business standpoint um no i mean we've heard from management that we you know sometimes we're doing emergency things to get them done because it takes a whole month when something something that came in today cannot be acted on until june 27th yeah that's over a month of action and that's just reasonable. sometimes we do emergency action but two a month i think is yeah, and i think just like discussion yesterday where we're trying to cram in Kind of like the newsletter or whatever to like 20 seconds and it really is just right. it's just not an efficient way so i echo what you said about the workshops like i think we're something we need some different type of cadence uh, we don't want you all here like grammar right we want to make sure that we're doing it efficiently not inundating you and making grand matters be here you know all the time but yeah, yeah i think one of the ways we could do that is the discussion items but we can also do um, necessary business that second one with discussion items and just do business potentially on the first one. Mm -hmm. um, but we'll, we'll have to agree on that yeah. and uh, make that change. All right. Uh, master planning? Master planning. All righty. That's probably what we've got. A pretty good audience, I would expect. Do um, you want to bring this up before we start taking? <laughs> yeah. Yes and no. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I kind of have like a, an outline thing here, but it's not necessarily what, what we have to do. I can, I mean, do you want me to? You have some ideas specifically. You, so you've, you know, you've talked about it. People have talked to us about it a lot. Um, yeah, I, Facebook uh, porches a lot of I will say, around master planning. So, yeah. yes, those here feel that a master plan is absolutely necessary before any decisions are made on anything. Yeah, yeah. and and. We're here to listen. We're not here to talk. I see it coming. Right. Um, we're here to listen. We're not here to talk. So we're going to do just that. So master planning. We'll do the same thing. We'll do kind of the serpentine. We'll start in person and then we'll go online. And just again, open forum, respectful. Yeah. Um, I think with the intent being, we need to review our master plan and develop and update our master plan 
what's feedback for that? Yeah. Where, where are we right now? Where do we need to go? How do we get there? Um, key enablers, partners, finance, whatever you have on your mind, just let it let it go. Um, Don had his hand up. Don, can you give a thumbs up? Oh, okay. Oh, I was just cheering on a, the I'll idea of a master up. plan. <laughs> Actually, a plan that's a master plan. Um, I, would, I would like to share that years ago when I was on the board, there was a very um, comprehensive master plan by Jeffrey Mallon. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, that I would like for you guys to take a peek at. Also, um, and putting that, I know Adam Parrish was on the committee for eight years that looked at this as well. I, mean, I think there's a lot of um, tremendous input from the community that I would like to see put together in one, in one place and really look at the, every lot we have left, what our options are, um, what the order is as, as far as what people want it. And I appreciate you all bringing this up. Yeah, um, and I discussed with Mike Jackson, he brought up a, a great idea when we talked about having that same thing for the capital improvements so people can have an idea yeah. of how we're doing that over a three to five year period. Yeah, financial is of course a part of it. Absolutely. Yeah, that was part of the charter too, right, Gary, with the concurrent with the budget, right? That was because of the five year budget network. Do you want to come up and it's the Gary House for the 1471? Oh, sorry. Oh, uh, <coughs> it's an extension. Right. The the new bylaws talk about putting together a five year budget looking ahead, right. but also speaks to a strategic plan. Right. So right. if you want to include the word master plan under the heading of strategic plan, you can yeah. do that. Excellent. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Does that sound good though? You want to do five budgets at the same time? <laughs> <laughs> I already do four. <laughs> True. Um, I want to say. Um, I'm going to run through real quick just my notes here. This was an initial um, idea for this, and this is not something that we have discussed or planned. Um, my initial thought was that we need to have a workshop to do a phase one survey that is, Debbie, to your point, speaking on historical data and current data and develop a master plan or strategic plan advisory committee. Um, then that group needs to submit something to the community to get feedback. Then we gather that data for phase which focuses those ideas down that goes back to the community because if we have 20 30 100 ideas of what we should do we need to focus that down to the top however many and that goes back out to the community and based on that feedback the advisory committee and the board develops a three five and ten year master plan and that's presented to the community so that's that is an outline that is not a collective thought it's just an idea but that's also out there for discussion i think that's a great idea sorry just real quick. so i i think that and then Debbie, what you said about the Mallon plan and, and the framework is there, right? It's been done right. several times over and over again. So we don't necessarily need to reinvent the wheel. We you need to respect relevant. what was done, yeah. honor it. And again, also just being honest, like when we flip forwards, right, then we have that. That's our North Star. That's what we work towards. And yes. we have our priorities. So we're not kind of going around and reinventing the wheel every right. year. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Again, it's yeah. vision and strategy. So I idea. wanted to correct myself publicly. I misspoke. Oh, what? It is not a five year budget. The bylaws call for a three year budget. No one can predict what a five year budget will look like. Sure. It's only three years. Thank you. Okay. I also want to say, as well, with you know, getting community input, also putting a communications plan together yep. on how to get the word out there so that it's not the same 20 people always showing up. And getting there because it's important to get everyone's input into such a strategic plan for the community and fully understanding that something that might have been done 10 years ago prior to COVID probably looks a lot different now because we have a completely different face of residents that have come in from different areas. Sure. Can, can I ask you a question? Yes. Because um, one of the things we discussed at the organizational meeting was potentially uh, not having it in the evening and on the weekend. So that, that might be better for families, but a counterpoint to that in the um, meeting was that weekends are just as bad for families. So I know you guys are busy. I see all the pictures on Facebook. Um, can you give me an idea of how you manage that and what kind of what's like an optimum time for a busy family like yourself? It's really hard to say an optimal time, right? Because we're in sports on the weekends. So they've got practices and stuff like that. To be honest, for us, and I hate to say it, but like a Friday night is probably more open. I hate it because, I mean, that's like our movie night. But I feel like that's the day that 
kind of don't have anything. Maybe My time do is like whatever she says. <laughs> 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 Granted, not like that answer. No, but maybe doing like how they did like the happy hour out there, bringing or having bring your kids and uh, yeah, do something so that the kids can have somewhere. The, the reality is you're going to have to scatter shot it. You're going to yeah. appeal to different people at different, I mean, different I'm a morning guy. Listen, I'm going to hit, hit up anybody and say, you want to do Starbucks at 630 in the morning. And most people look at me cross-eyed, but there are a few people that do it. So. Well, you've asked me, I think, six times and got, you've said zero. Yeah. <laughs> no, but if you're doing like a community needs assessment and you're trying to reach a broad range of people, you're going to have to do it in different ways. You're going to have to do an email survey. Yep. You're going to have to do in-person meetings. Right. Something to do. Right. You're going to have to have the staff out at the amenity saying, hey, do you want to take a survey? Here's a QR code. Here's a paper copy. You know, going to CDD meetings if they let us go there, or going to the foundation meetings if they let us yep. go there, and meeting with the partners in the community as well, and getting their feedback on what they think. Yes. No, I agree. And all that is great. Yeah. And, and I'm going to say something. I would never contradict my wife. I'm going to spin it a little bit differently. <laughs> um, I want to be careful here. Yeah, you do. This is being recorded. <laughs> Publicly in our CDD meetings, I have talked about where we're looking at the land behind the K-5 school and some different things to do out there. We are still very young in that process. So don't everybody jump up and down and think that we've locked in on it yet. But the first thing the county asked me was, have you as a community done any surveys in the past? And I went through and I looked at 2010, 2015, 2019. And while I agree, COVID changes things, time changes things. Over a decade of three surveys that were all well done to different variants, about 75% of what was in there was a common thread. I'd be willing to bet if you guys dropped another 50 grand on another low study and went through the six months of it and came out on the other end, you'd look back and say, wow, that looks a lot like 2019. Right. So my suggestion to you would be to, to shorten the fuse a little bit you might want to think about instead of going out to the community with a blank sheet of paper, come to the community with here's a consolidation of what we've already done surveys on. We have heard you anecdotally, whatever else. Here are some other things that we've heard around the community that are some interests and work those into it. I think shortening that fuse. I mean, the honest answer is maybe I'm just me. I am surveyed out, guys. We, we've said several times what it is we're looking for, and a lot of that's not going to change. Right. And this is not an emergency. Like these things are time tested and you know you yep. get occasional like you know new things that change. we still need more basketball courts we yeah. still need more tennis courts and you just refresh it over time too right can we go to the middle of the front yes. thank you uh yeah I, I haven't introduced myself i'm my name is tony romero i'm 837 lake Gavilan. um one of the things that kind of stands out to me and and i, I very much agree with and it, it dovetails into this nicely of the the fact that like i've heard about a lot about this loose study that was done in 2019 i only became a resident in 2020 i haven't been queried on it I see the loose study. There's nothing in there that I disagree with. Like I, I fully support it. I agree with it. But there is kind of an aspect there of, of any sort of master plan that we develop. You know, we shouldn't necessarily feel locked into it. You know, we, we it should be a living, breathing document as the community evolves and grows and changes demographically, et cetera. You know, and that's kind of where maybe there is that option there of, of saying, well, here's what we have come up with. This is the list of the top 10 priorities for us. How do, do, is this still where we should be focusing our priorities, you know, uh, and, and having a more regular cadence that doesn't cost us $50,000 to develop a full study? Sure. Yeah, and, and the communication advisory group uh, did some uh, a fair amount of work in that. Um, I don't know, uh, Janine, if you're still on, if you want to Talk to that. She may not be still on. She's on. She is. Or if you don't want to comment, that's okay. <laughs> but she does. And Jim, I made it. John yeah. Greenberg's yes. So how do those? How do those communications between people come together? Because like people that are at the fields, like Greg and I have had numerous conversations at soccer, at flag football. I'm involved with the school. I'm up at school. People are having these conversations. So you get a good feeling of, of what, how people feel. But there's people that don't have kids, right? That to get what their perceptions are, what's important to them. Like it's a big one for me. People blowing stop signs all over a town. I talked to Greg about it before. Speeding. That's high on my list. I talked to Celia numerous times about things that we can do. Illegal parking all over the place downtown. Well, it's not us. It's not us. It's Lexon. Well, you know, the board's there to fight for us to fight with Lexon to fix some of the things that our kids might get hit by a car with. But 
it's what's important to everybody is to come together for that master list, right? And that's why we have to whatever outreach it is. Well, and everybody's that goes back to our communication more. conversation of making sure we're reaching out to everyone through every way possible. Well, and also too, that's another part of it is making sure we liaison as as a as a board, not just as a liaison. Right. CCTV and you know, uh, and and then we have, however challenging it might be, have a relationship with Lexin that we can have a business. Uh, practical sit down discussion with them. Yeah, and that's also, I think that's a good point, right? The role of work, and this is where we need to also sit down with you, right? We need you to cultivate these relationships and really make sure we're empowering you to build these and make sure, you know, we want to make sure you're set up for success. We don't want you, you know, sitting behind the computer answering emails for eight hours a day, making sure we're doing the right thing because it begins and ends with the seven of us. So you've um, got a hand online that's been up for a let's go to, Let's go to Gary real because I know Gary's yeah. had his hand up. Sure. I wanted to back up what Greg said. Please don't start over on this master plan. Let's build on what we have. It's respectful to the residents that have been here for many years and the money that we've already spent. So let's build on that and not start over. Thank yeah, you. I, well, I, I think, yeah, we ought to, even, I even reference the yeah, sure we have historical data in what we're doing. Yeah, we're, we all believe strongly in the fact that the community is what it is, um, partly because of the master plan and that there was a vision that we want to fulfill and or reignite um, by doing things like this. So we have a lot of expenses we do, and it's, we have to be mindful of where we're spending. And, and again, if we have this framework in place, let's respect it and honor it and, and tap into the people in the community who helped put it together. So um, let's, Andrew, I know you're on the line. Do you have a question or comment? Andrew? Andrew, do you have a question online? Okay. Sorry, getting there. I just uh, was grabbing something on the my screen. So yeah, I guess on the master plan, right? And I'm, I'm gonna pull it up now. There, I think there's a number of questions we truly need to uh, to discuss. Um, sorry, you caught me when I was doing something else. All right, so kind of more food for thought Wait, and you need dinner or something. Or, no, no, I got it now. Sorry. So more questions overall that we need to do with our community. So I guess the first thing which came up last night, right? A51 building, it's gonna cost close to 2 million, put it back to code and make it a somewhat okay building, but it doesn't do anything. So do we need to truly renovate it or demolish it and build something new? My personal preference is to build something new, but uh, in, in a brief conversation with Charles, he said that the, the road right next to the A51 building is owned by the school and is there an opportunity to purchase that? So is there some plan here that we would purchase that land, take a mortgage out, build a new town hall, town hall for us? Uh, next thing I think is something that's always on the radar is the Stetson building. They, uh, they're they pretty much down, I think, one or two tenants. And I don't see commercial real estate getting any better anytime soon. So we should always have some powder dry that in the event whoever owns that goes belly up or there's an opportunity for a liquidation that crow is prepared to take advantage of that opportunity when it comes up uh, the next one would be obviously the civic corridor and lot d and b which we'll see how the referendum plays out but what do we do with that space for b and d um, i know the ccdd has their building out there which is more of a manufactured structure Nothing that I personally view as permanent or long term. So is there something if we're going to dream big that we almost do a lot B, C and D community center with parking lots on each side and do something that's truly nice for the community and can be used by all. Now, again, these are going to be some expensive items, so it's not something that Crow is going to be able to do it alone and is there an opportunity to do bonding with the CCDD for completion of the civic corridor, as well as do we want to do anything with lot F? Um, you know, that's a space for an iconic building. Personally, I don't think it's it's worth it, but maybe we do studies just to confirm that, yeah, that's going to be way too costly to do anything and not anything that, that really fits in our master plan in the near future. Um, and then to what Greg already mentioned, the the area behind Island Village or Island Village K5 school, you know, with the gas line underneath it, 
seems like there's really no structures that can be built. So that truly is a park for lawn sports, athletic fields, maybe a playground. I'm not sure. But if we are going to go the route that we realize celebration is not decrepit, but maybe falling apart and not as shiny as it used to be, um, you know, we might need to think of let's look at where these lands are, what we want to put on it, and how we're going to do the financing, whether through a mortgage on our own or a CCDD bonding to put these amenities in place. So that's that's kind of my my big areas there. And then I guess just some other ones, right? Is there anything in existing parks? I know the what the 2014 master plan had two pickleball courts in the North uh, Village area in the center. And we're what, almost 10 years after that and nothing's happened there. So clearly the, the master plan has been disregarded on a number of parks in the different villages and what what do we want to do there or do we need to revisit those so there's there's plenty to chew from plenty to work through a number of conversations we'll all have to have but i guess the final comment i'll make is i'm i'm not that advocate of the survey at this point because i think they are too vague and open where we really need to find what are the couple things, whether that's the A51 building, the Civic Corridor, the, the K5 LAN, what is the priority or focus of the community that, that we do something with? Or maybe it's none of those and it's the parks we currently have. So all, all discussions that should be had, but again, I don't want to have a survey that just produces results we already have and isn't really providing any uh, added benefit. So thanks for your time, guys. Thank you. I have a question. Answers. You've Maybe. surveyed a lot of people, but have you actually surveyed the land? How much land do we have here in celebration that is actually usable for stuff? There's a field behind the East Village pool that used to be used for lacrosse. But then the nets got all torn up because other people use them other than the lacrosse people. And so now we have a field that doesn't get used much. Probably needs to be aerated because fields of play, when you play football or baseball or any field sport, the fields have to be aerated or the grass doesn't grow. We found that out behind Heritage Hall. The kids play on that constantly and the grass dies and you end up with sand. And by the way, kids that have asthma and are breathing sand into their lungs are not gonna do well as an adult my age. My father died of lung disease from particles that he breathed in. So as we look at celebration and we wanna bring it up into the next century, not looking backwards of what happened in 2014, 2019, let's move forward and look how our community can make a big impact in the area. And yes, I understand money. For God's sake, my father was a stockbroker. I get it. Okay? But we have to do what's best for us as a community. Have we ever done a census? Do we know actually how many children we have here? How many elderly adults we have? Here? How many teenagers we have here who have absolutely nothing to do in this community? I see trash cans being taken down the street and maybe that's from kids from out of here. But I taught school for 18 years and I can tell you that teenagers that don't have anything to do, go out and find things to do. I know. I taught them. I listened to their conversations. And they said, yeah, we had those houses down in Lake Evelyn. What fun. Okay? If we don't have anything for them to do, they're just going to make up games for themselves. So let's look at what we have in the way of land, what we have in the way of people, 
and then take a survey as to what those people would like to do to those lands. I think everything you're saying is, is true. I, I know we have this data. I don't know it off the top of my head. I know we know what land we have. I know we know our demographics, but part of this, what we're talking about is here is gathering all that so that we can figure this out. So exactly to your point. Yeah, and it's, it's having the land, right? So what are our, what are our resources? We have land, we have money, we have um, management, right? Management time, management talent, and that all, these are all key enablers. And then, you know, from a finance perspective, right? Do we need to talk to CDD? Do we need to talk to banks? Do we need to talk to the county? Do we need to talk to the schools? And having those partnerships and those relationships because we don't have to do everything on our own. That was one of the guiding principles of the low study. Should you choose to follow that? So and again, leveraging we can leverage things like that. We, we can take hybrids of the Mellon study, the low study, the, the framework is there. So my suggestion on starting point is, you know, again, the, the what do you build? <clears throat> I think is going to become evident through prior studies and communication with the community. I don't want to say that's the easy part because you need to get consensus around that. But where, where I'm challenged is, you know, there have been 25 years of well-intentioned smart boards yeah. that we haven't been able to get this done. And the conversation I haven't heard really as an introspection is why? You know, what have it, and, and again, not that it's attributional, not that anybody did anything bad, but what were the challenges that faced each board as to why either they couldn't get it done or it just took so damn long? Part of it's financing. Part of its turnover of boards. Being able to identify those and mitigate those first, you can have a wish list of all you want, but until you figure out why it is in 25 years, boards are just moving at such a slow pace. And listen, guys, you are trying. I've talked to boards before, you worked with boards before, you've been on the committees. I, I get it. There's well intentioned people, but until you get an honest self assessment as to why you're not being successful in getting these implemented, it really doesn't matter what you put on the list. And, and I believe, and again, I said this publicly at our workshop. I believe the number one thing is your financing. That's why I'm so strong, and we'll say it again, you guys need to look at the bonding option because the problem I continue to see, you guys amass like 800,000 a year. What are you pulling in capital each year? About 850,000 a year? 810. 810. 810,000 a year. Do the quick math. Assuming lot D goes through as, as it was voted on, you got Two and a half million left in the coffers. Never mind what you need to do to this building. That could zero that out in a New York minute from what I heard last night. Even if that didn't happen and this building was zero and you got it all covered from insurance, the numbers that Mike and Brian pulled together in a community center as a rough wag, and I've got every reason to believe they're on target, eight to 10 million, 810,000 and 2.5 million. It's going to take you guys seven to nine years, assuming there's no cost increases. There's nothing else you need to spend money on. There's nothing else you want to spend money on. Your board can't operate that way. There's going to be other things that are going to be distractors. There's no way you're ever going to get to a $10 million project at the way you, you collect money today. Whether that's Crowa goes it alone and you take a loan, it could be an option. Something to talk to your finance committee about. But that's why I say until you figure out the financing piece, I don't think the rest of this really matters. I think that's all part of the whole conversation because it, it, it does all of that. It, 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 it does, but what I'm saying is, is you, you, the, the, the question and the surveys of what do we build, it, it, even the low study didn't really get into how do we do it. Right. And, and it said, hey, you need to go out and have those community or those partner engagements, whether you talk to the county like they tried to do the soccer fields, whether you end up talking to us, whether you guys could make whatever. It, it didn't really zero in on that. That study zeroed on on what is it that we want. And I think we're focusing on the wrong can. question at this point. Well, would assume too that the board would run with it too, right? That boards would would honor it and you know kind of you know yeah, action on things. Too. Right. So, and again, that's that's a larger discussion and really a larger culture. I think that that needs to. Uh, sorry, Tony, and then I yeah. Um, so, first thing I wanted to say is, as as a teen who or as somebody who grew up in a town with not a lot to do, I I will second that. Yes, teens will find something to do, and it's usually not to no good. Um, but the actual comment that I wanted to make, uh, you know, coming from the comment that came from online is, that, you know, this is the second time, I've, second or third time I've heard about Lot F. I, I don't know a whole lot about Lot F, aside from the fact that what can go on there is limited and it's an iconic building and that it's going to be very, very costly. Uh, you know, I, I heard that 
board mentioned the possibility of, you know, kind of getting an assessment of what it is that we could do and what that cost would look like. But, you know, as low as I am to suggest this, because obviously real estate and, and land in the community is at a premium at this point, we're running out of it, we don't have places to build, you know, if lot F is going to be this big expensive project that we can't afford, then lot F isn't presenting value to us as an asset. I'm sure that there's a builder out there who would love to build an iconic building on that property that would potentially help us with some of the financing piece of how do we make a, a you know a community center or something along those lines within the community. Just a thought. Yeah, Howie. Yeah, um, um, I I believe one of the problems is that lot F is basically underwater. Um, it, it it came into play a couple of years ago when there was a just there was the community was approached by a charter school who wanted to take over that portion. And there was some information handed out about what it would take to make that dry land. And I, I do agree that I think it's way beyond something that we could possibly do, unless I'm thinking about the, the wrong property. I, I did want to address uh, Greg's um, comment because I think there's a piece that's missing on it. We, this kind of board that we have with seven people voted on by the entire community is actually relatively new. It is only been in existence since, and Gary would know this better than I do, 2012, uh, when we went from, we used to vote by communities, said representatives, and the representatives really didn't have much power because we still had development involved, development developers involved with us. I, am I right that it was about 2012, a little before that, um, okay, 2010, 11, when, so uh, this kind of system is fairly new. And by the time seven people being in charge came on board, I think so many patterns were already set and we were working with a management company who was already used to doing it a certain way and I believe that's one of the reasons that things have progressed very slowly. I I agree, I agree with what you're saying. I, I do yeah, agree I with the things Greg was saying. I do want to say, and I'm not usually one to like try and defend that mass half of this was so that the seven of us could learn to work together more effectively so that it's not an embarrassment to the community. Because that's how I feel. And that's why I caused the meeting. The three of us that are here also wanted to talk about the master plan because to the three of us that is a very important thing and we wanted to also spend the time while we're gathered to talk about that this has turned into all of that for the circumstances that it is and i think that's beneficial but i know uh, i'll speak for myself and I, I think we're all on the same page the three of us is the master plan and something real to go forward knowing that even construction is something we're going to be passing on to the next board it's something that we're very committed to, not just for us, but for the longevity of the project. So of whatever that is and however that looks. So I can say for us, that's something we're strongly committed to. Yeah. And, and I think, again, as we start, I think we're going to have a strategy session at some point soon, right? Next month. Yeah. Like the third, second or third week, just waiting for people to get back on their schedules. Okay. Well, I won't speak for the other four because they're not here, but I, I think the, the, I mean, for us, right? I think yeah. that's something we, we need to spend some time on, some care on, as we start thinking about, you know, how, how do we want to articulate the strategy and the vision going forward? Um, you know, I think I've, I've tried to kind of report my thoughts on the master plan, but, you know, the Mallon study, right? It was very thoughtful around the community center is great. We, we need a community center. We like number one and number two. Um, but splash pads were on there, uh, the artisan part. Uh, restroom, right? That was on there. The amphitheater. Amphitheater restroom. Yeah. So there are a lot of things that can be done and there are low hanging fruits. And I think we need to take those small wins where we can. And keep in mind, like, we need a community center at the end of the day, right? That's what we want. But we need to also realize, like, year by year, what can we do? Um, you, know, you know, village by village enhancing, having barbecue grill at the South Village, enhancing Heritage Hall, little things like that, they all add up. They're incremental wins. Yeah, it, it, it makes me happy that the two new board members who have a three-year term 
um, and myself, who still has another um, over a year and a half, um, are, are focusing on this because that's really important because it is difficult if, if your um, term ends uh, next March to see the long term, to see the value in planning and strategy sometimes. Um, and so I'm just very happy um, that they're both on the board and, and for their support in this. Yeah, again, I think that we need to, we need to spend the time um, building the vision, building the strategy, short term is long term. I think that's really important. And again, I think it all goes back to, to Laura. I think we, Grand Memphis has taken it on the chin quite a lot, just to be very honest. And I think that's where we need to uh, be there and be listening to you and removing barriers and working with you. And if you need technology or you need things to do your job better, we need to have those discussions. And that's where it starts. And those, those things. And obviously, the master plan. Everything else. Those conversations. Can I ask a question right on the dovetailing on that? Sure. And I don't know if you guys have had discussions, Lauren, not to put you on the spot. What do you guys have as far as, I mean, talk a little bit about Grand Manors, where you've done this before. We're not the first community to sit here and take a look and say, what do we want to do for the next 10 years? In terms of strategic planning on this level? Yeah, I mean, do you guys have, I mean, are, are there people within your company that do, you know, I know we had Steve Waring was a Parks and Rec guy a couple of years ago, and he, he had the ability to look at some of you. What do you have as, because the honest answer is the seven of them up there are not going to be able to do that on their own and even the committees are limited. I mean, really a lot of this has been from you guys. What, what do you have to bring to it? So, I mean, Roger, our local VP has done strategic planning in communities that he's worked in previously. Obviously, Celebration is a different entity unto itself, even compared to other master plan communities, especially with all the governing entities here. I can say strategic planning for CROA, I would more akin to strategic planning for a city or county department or separately elected department. Um, I honestly, just based on my background, I look at CROA and the CDD and the foundation as different governmental entities all struggling for the same bite at the apple. So really for me, it's more of a, it's strategic planning, but it's also a community needs assessment and working with your partners and having those planning meetings with the CDD and with the foundation on, okay, what are our goals together and how do we accomplish those things? Well, so, and that's, I mean, that's my background, but then state, I can also say that Stacy as well has done strategic planning in other communities. It, so it's, it runs the gamut up and down. The, but I think one of the things you said was exactly where I was hoping a comment was going to come was, you know, I almost wonder, do we need to hire as a consultant or get somewhere on staff, get a municipal planner? Oh, absolutely. absolutely. Who, who is somebody who has yeah. done, I don't want to say New York City level development, but I mean, we are, yeah, we're all, we're our town. I mean, you call it, we're not officially incorporated, but we're talking about things as if we were a municipality. We need a civic plan. I absolutely think we need a civic plan. In New York City. I think I said that somewhere. Recently. You know, and that's going to be someone who's going to not just pull together again the what, but more importantly, yeah. the how. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Great idea. There's a question in the back. Joanna. Uh, no, no. Um, I would also ask Laura and, and you gentlemen. Um, we have Grand Manners as uh, our managing agent. I would hope that the managing agent, or at least maybe um, I don't see this because I'm a, a resident here. If the managing agent sees some things that are not right or could be done perhaps in a different way, that the managing agent would come to those seven and say, maybe we could do this in a different way. That happens. Yeah, that I think that's happened, happened before a couple of times. Yeah. Okay. Well, well, I think that's today. That's how, you got how many of you want to admit to? Well, I'll, I'll own up to the Monday Matters. That was. A long time coming, but that was one of my first questions. There's a lot of those things that we bring to the board. I've really been just aim to be honest with you. I've been aiming for just stabilization of operational operation mm -hmm. and trying to you hit know, the low hanging fruit in terms were of left in a terrible. Predicament. So I mean, we've just been working on stabilizing operations and hitting the low hanging fruit, and some of that was related to comms. 
Some of that was related to the digital signage of the amenities. Um, obviously, covenants is a huge issue for us, so we're still trying to work on that with the help of the technology committee. The website was one of them. So, I mean, yes, I think I I bother the board a lot with my, hey, can we do this or hey, can we try this? Good. Let's okay. I could bother. It. I was going to ask. So, piggybacking on what Jared said about collaborating with the seven, um, was there a reason of why the board did not have consent? The question was. Is there a reason why the other four did not show up? Um, I, I'm going to address that directly yes. because I think that's a fair question. Um, David Anderson had a pre existing scheduled conflict. I'm reading the emails that were sent. And he had a pre existing scheduled conflict. Um, Bill said he was originally available only Thursday, which is why the meeting is today, and then decided he would not attend. Uh, Celia said, I will not be attending. I've already had two three hour sessions with grand Manners on best practices as a board member. I paid attention, so no need for any more time from me. And Cindy did not answer any of the requests for this meeting. Thank you. Yep. So, uh, kind of getting off topic, going back towards the communication side of things a little bit. But, uh, you know, one of the things that I kind of feel like as far as the communication side of things go, and I've, I've obviously seen the Facebook comments and the, the arguments over, you know, who's responsible for what and, and you know, why, why is Grand Matters not doing this? Why is, you know, why is this not happening? Um, those sorts of things are, are kind of seem very opaque to me. Like, I mean, like, obviously, as she's saying, you know, you got, she came to you guys with a bunch of recommendations, you know, just, just today, like, I don't see any like, hey, like, these are the things that Grand Matters is doing for us. Um, and, and I think that, you know, that's kind of one of the frustrations that I feel like when I see those posts is like, I understand that grand matters is doing something for us. I understand that there's a contribution that you guys are making, but also at the same time, like I, I can't necessarily quantify it and go, this is what grand matters has done. Like, I can't refute that when I see it on Facebook and be like, well, grand matters has done this for us. Yeah, you can, it's, well, so there's nothing there. Yeah, and I think we were guilty of like, you know, looking past the whole, like we go to the parks or whatever, and we see like the grass is dead and then we want to give it to you on the chin, but we, and we've talked about this, right? We need you to like help your successes because you've dealt with a lot to the point of someone who said earlier that there's been a lot of headwinds and a lot of things to get on for. And look, I was, I'm guilty of it too, right? I gave it to you on the chin too, um, but you really persevered. And again, this board of seven needs to empower you and your staff. Well, to do that. I think part of that is having more time with the residents and meetings like this in the other meeting because yeah. she, there is a management update, but it seems like it's rushed through uh, every time. Well, I mean, it's 11, 12 pages long that just, I mean, it gets. No, it gets, I, but, but, but there is the time people. pressure for you, I think. It wouldn't hurt me if I'm wrong. In, in the, the staff. Uh, the staff newsletter, there are some things like improve, uh, like accomplishments. Maybe some of those could go in the Monday Matters just to update some. The town hall that I do? Yeah, not all of that, but you know, there's some good things in there. They're like, this is what we accomplished this week. Maybe some of those things could go into, and that this is by no means a director, but an idea for consideration. Let's go online to Shelly, and then we'll share with Jill and Greg. So, Shelly, give your hand up online. I do. So, I don't. I, I hope I articulate this properly. I appreciate the three of you in the meeting tonight. I appreciate Lauren being there and Grand Manners and all that they do. I sat on the Covenants Committee. I know what we asked of them and I know every single meeting they tried to, I don't wanna say be better because they didn't necessarily need to be better. They tried to organize their thoughts, the meeting, the way they do things to satisfy the Covenants Committee. What I'm not sure, well, and one more thing, to the public that is there tonight and those people like Andrew and Greg and um, there's another gentleman and I'll forget his name and I'm sorry, but that have worked on this referendum. I hope that we can engage more than the 600 people because we're going to need them all some of those 600 may not be able to vote for one reason or another being out or whatever and we're going to need all those votes plus some but then my last statement is 
I see three of you sitting there. I hear what you just said to us about why the others are not there. And if one of the comments was, I don't need any more training or I don't need any more whatever Celia said, I am concerned as to how even what we've talked about in this meeting, which is so beneficial, will ever come to their ears. Because you only give time for us to talk at the beginning of the meeting. But when we have a question or a thought or something to add value to your conversation, that's not the time when we can say it. So then there is no time. If we don't have these workshops or these meetings like you're having tonight, there is never a back and forth. We can come to all the board meetings we want. We get our two minutes and we have to talk about what we talk, what came out of the meeting before it. We don't progress. We go backwards every single time. And none of us are fully getting our thoughts across to the other board members. I agree with that. And I, I think we will. I will make a recommendation that we go to two meetings a month. There has been strong opposition to that. But I will I will make a recommendation that we do go to two meetings a month. So the, like we said at the very beginning here, uh, one meeting where it is more open forum workshop like this to discuss what's going to be on the agenda and then the voting on the agenda later. And then we can also action on things that need quicker signing or or quicker movement by doing it twice a month. Yep. And you can recommend so it. I, I will do that. I will it. make that I'm recommendation. I'm sorry? I guess that's what I'm saying. You can recommend it, but you are three. They are four. Correct. We, we do the best we can. You know, this is. Uh -huh. I know you do. Yeah, we're happy to have this workshop. We're happy who showed up today. The conversation has been good, and we'll yeah. certainly take yeah. uh, the feedback very seriously. Well, and, and just so you know, this. Uh, per the charter, this was called by two of us, which is all that's needed to call this type of meeting. So if we need to, we will use that vehicle again. You can't regulate other behavior, but we do the best we can. So, um, you just no, would Shelley, thank you. Yep, you just would like to think that those board, the other board members, the board as a whole, would want to do everything they can to hear everything they can, to have as much participation as they can. I would say that was the purpose of this meeting tonight, and this agenda was shared, including a more detailed agenda of all the things um, internally. So it was not a surprise what we were discussing tonight to anyone that was invited to speak on the board. Yep. All right, let's no. Thank you, Shelley. Thank you, Jared. I think we've been yeah. I think we're done that. Yeah. So um, let's go to Jill. So so I want to um, piggyback on what Shelley said again a little bit. I agree a hundred percent with what she said. I appreciate the three of you incredibly. I spent five years on the dog park committee, so I have worked very closely with both our previous management company and, and our current management company. And there is a world of difference between the cooperation previous and the cooperation now. And, and I very much appreciated, at least when I was still on the committee, how much uh, Grand Manners participated in our monthly meetings and and what they brought to the dog park committee. Um, I will say I find it incredibly disrespectful that those four members are not here tonight. No matter what they say, it's disrespectful to the community, to you three, to everybody who showed up tonight. It's it's kind of inexcusable, and I hope there's change in me. That's all. Thank you. So. You were talking a minute ago on, on management, and, and I will absolutely say, I mean, from our board perspective, I could not live without my management team, and I'm sure you guys are the same thing with Grant Manners. You know, Gary and I arm wrestled for the better part of 18 months with about five other people who were writing up the RFP and, and the statement of work that went with it and all that. Guys, that is your roadmap by which you are going to evaluate your, your management team, you know, and, and, and all the other inputs that come in you know, from the community should be able to group into that. We actually just went through with ours. It was supposed to be published in our last meeting. We need to get it out. You know, but but that was was how I took ours was go down line by line against all those elements of the statement of work and score. How did they do? Where did they do where well? Where do they need to improve? You know, I, 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 this was an agenda item last night, so I don't know if it's on the I did. No, I did. We yeah. did talk about this okay. specifically, and, and that's the plan. Okay. Yeah, and, and Gary, can I call you out for that one? 
don't think you recommended that. Yes. I know with, yeah. so Credit we, where it's due. It no, we wanted to make sure that we check out properly. Call out in a good way. Call it in a good way. I'm sorry. Thank you. Gary Here, is the right guy to get into a room with you for eight hours and drag you through every one of the Thank you. So, yes, we need to get attention to that. <clears throat> Let's, we just want to go online and then we'll yeah. go back. So, Alina Arulana. I pronounced it right. She's she put her hand there. She's almost there. Okay. Next. Okay. Um, uh, a couple points. One on the communication. Back to that real quickly again. So, last year on the technology committee, there was an uproar in the community about the chargers downtown, like where they're placed, who's using them. We have a couple of volunteers on our team. One from Disney. We put this whole big chart together of who's using it, hours, and reason why. the country and I've been part of celebration. I came here in 1999. I was a keynote speaker for the School for Technology for the Florida Education Technology Committee. I helped with video and technology in our school. And I own three properties in town. I've been in since 2010. It's unique because we have facilities and things that go on in our town that outside people use a lot, right? From Jeter Van to our events to now I, 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 I'm on part of the Celebration Volleyball Club and we fight with the sand tennis people who don't live in town. And I think pickleball could be the same thing with a lot of people coming from outside of town to use our facilities. Which is fine, but I think when we make a master plan, it should all go to benefit the residents, right? Residents should always be number one for our facilities, from a commu community center, what we do, because we do have all these people that flood our town. It's fine, we need it for our businesses and we love it, but not when it ruins our lives as far as traffic, or we can't walk out and use a tennis court because they have lessons all day on there from somebody who's making money off it. Right? That just irks me with that. And you know, I think we see that a lot. So <laughs> um, yeah, one of the one you you can call me Heather. Oh, Heather. Yeah, um, I have similar concerns. Um, I love all this talk of going forward, but I think that before we start adding new amenities, we need to address what we have now. Um, you know, we have one basketball court that's used predominantly by non residents. You know, school kids have a tough time getting out there and playing after school. The parking at Lakeside is not enforced in any way. Um, I mean, I there are so many cars that park on the grass all over town. Um, I, I you know, uh, I was over at um, Lakeside Pool this afternoon. And um, I assume it was someone with one of the partner programs the, at the pool. They propped the gate open with a bucket of balls so people could come and go. And my worst fear is a child wandering in there, you know, going from the playground into the pool area. I mean, it, it's, it's really scary as a parent to, you know, think about things like that. So I think accessibility, um, you know, I, I don't want to say, I want to say leave the community, you know, outsiders out. But we are paying for these things with our money, and they should be available for us. Yeah. Well, it's a liability. There's Absolutely. liabilities, and there's things that I think we need to we need to think about more thoughtfully. Lauren started taking notes on that too. <laughs> <laughs> there's liability. I'm Sandy Shalitsky, live on Sterling Drive. I was at last night's. Meeting. Can you come up here? Sorry, sorry. We want to make sure everyone online hears you. Thank you very much. <laughs> and Alina's back too. Okay. Uh, I was at last night's meeting and tonight. Last night was a little stressful at times. I like what's happened tonight. This was a public meeting. We knew about the date. Everybody knew about what, what was to be discussed, where to be. I just want to, for everyone else, say thank you to you three who are here being so receptive to everything that is there. This is what we need to do. Yeah. Okay, hopefully you can hear me now. 
Yes. Great. So I don't usually bash teams, but I'm going to now because I'm not uh, technologically, you know, um, illiterate and I never usually have problems, but Teams is really not good for these kinds of meetings. So I echo whoever spoke earlier about going back to Zoom for this because I'm having to use my work computer in order to get this thing to work properly. Um, but onto something positive, I really, really, really appreciate uh, the three of you and Lauren being there tonight because honestly, I think Everybody on this call virtually and everybody there in person is extremely grateful um, for you guys allowing us to actually have a voice, um, not a social media voice that gets read and then ignored and then bashed um, at the meetings. Um, I think we're really, really grateful that you guys are here and actually listening to us. And Lauren, I don't think you get enough uh, thanks for the difficult job that you do. Um, I know this is not easy at all and it's so yeah if you guys can clap for her there in person that would be great because really this has been a very drama filled uh as of late um and and i think all of us know that and we're really grateful to have somebody like you um working for us or working for grand manners through us um and honestly it's extremely embarrassing that the rest of the board isn't there and they were well aware that this was happening. Um, that's all I have to say. Thank you guys so much. Thanks, Alina. And I think before we take, you know, I think for me, and I assume for the rest of you, it's where do we go from here, right? We have a lot of good feedback. We have copious notes. How do we act on these? How do we come together as a board for, for the seven of us, right? To try and get on the same page and try to act on these. How do we? continue to empower them and how do we continue to find a path for the master plan? How do we continue to improve communication? So this is a start, but your feedback is being um, noted and we are going to yeah. try our best to yeah. act on it. Yeah, the other thing about the three of us up here, we greatly appreciate everyone took the time and energy to come here for the meeting. But we also appreciate the people that are online and the people that express their opinions on Facebook. Uh, a homeowner's voice is a homeowner's voice is a homeowner's voice, no matter where it comes. Um, it's easier to interact when you're here and, and we can hopefully ask questions or or allow you to um, talk more about specific topics. Um, but, you know, the three of us definitely, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, definitely feel like those are equal, right? A resident communicating with us, uh, and I sh should say you have residents, we have homeowners. Uh, homeowner communicating with us is hugely important. I'm happy with how many people are here online, and then I expected that maybe a quarter of this total. And so I'm very pleased with the amount of people that came because this is important. I'm glad we're talking about it. We're do everything we can to keep moving this forward. So. Yeah, and, and one more thing, and then we'll go back to questions. I, I realize that the optics are a board of three and a board of four, and that's, you know, obviously folks are entitled to their own interpretation. We really are a board of seven at the end of the day, and we, I, I'm being genuine. We need to find a path to enable these solutions to be better to our partners, to be better to grand matters. Um, that's why we were like around. So really our commitments, I, I would say. And I'll make that on behalf of the board. I, I feel comfortable in, in my role for the for the board who are working with us today. Um all right. So with that, I think we're back in person. Was it Greg? Yeah, I mean I'll, I'll say two more things and my wife's gonna turn me out of the room because we gotta take kids to get ice cream. <laughs> 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 exactly. I know. Yep. Did you tell her you were bringing her for ice cream when you came here? Tell her to bring the little Coming for 30 minutes, yeah, yeah. 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 you know, <laughs> that's on Thank you. you. Yeah. Nice the there you go. So, two recommendations I would throw out to you is number one, <clears throat> literally, the elephant in the room right now is we're sitting in a room that has no walls. So, as you guys talk, talk about strategic planning, there is reality right now. You guys don't have any other priorities other than what we're serving right now. One man's opinion, and, 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 and you know, somebody said earlier, hey, maintaining what we've got. This is at the core of it. We can't sit here and have black drapes and all this. And I realize 20,000 reasons as to why we got here, but we got 2 billion reasons as to why we need to get out of it. Um, yes. So I, 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 I 
can't stress enough. You guys can't talk about other stuff until you talk about what you do in this building. Yeah. Um, Agreed. Number two is my suggestion to you just watching the dynamics of the community and also where, where, where I sit on a CDD board work. We are, I, I would say, blessed that because we're a public board, we really can't have committees just because they would have to be publicly noticed. And what I found out from that was the upshot of that, the good side of that is it forces the community to come directly to us and interface with us. And it's great when you have committees. And I've been on the committees and Tanya's been on the committees. And most of the people in this room have been on committees and it's a good thing. The responsibility for something of a strategic plan sits with the seven of you. And somebody had mentioned earlier, you know, you guys may consider doing a, a strategic plan committee or something like that. You guys already have the intellectual capacity within the, the committees that you got. You know, my frustration sitting here watching discussions over the past couple of years as Parks and Rec was not brought into discussions and they were brought in after the fact, or, you know, and, and I just saw Parks and Rec because she sit right next to me. But there are other committees that is the same type of thing where it's, you know, either the, the the board takes it or puts it as a special task force or a different committee there. You guys have the structure that you have, use the volunteers that you got, but at the end of the day, the strategic vision thing has got to sit with the seven of you. And, and that can't, that that is you guys reaching out to your committees and saying, hey, feed me some information in here, but that's not them forming the vision for you. That's a forum like this where you're getting the input from the community and then you seven have to go do it. And listen, you got a challenge. I mean, I'm not gonna sit here and reiterate you got four empty seats here. You guys are going to have a challenge forming a strategic vision if you can't figure out how to get seven of you at the table. Um, but that's got to happen. There's no other way that does happen. So state the obvious if I got thrown out of here. I can't get out of here. Yeah. Uh -oh. I, have, I have a question. Um, you said that you guys are when you all came together as board, because it is kind of disappointing that there are four people missing. Did you do any type of team building? We did. We did. Did you all take the Myers Briggs? You did no. not. I, well, at least not this year. So I've taken it quite a few times. I worked at Brown Barge Middle School in Pensacola, Florida. We re rewrote middle school curriculum back several years ago. They're still using that curriculum today. And actually, I interviewed for a job here in Celebration School in 1996 to come down and teach. It was a three hour interview longer interview than I actually had at the college level, get a college job, um, which was frightening. Um, and when I got out of the interview, I realized that had I taken the job, it would be like jumping out of the frying pan into a fire because they had no plan. Okay? If you were here early in the school system with your kids, you knew the school had no plan. But when we, when we redid that curriculum, it took us a year we did some team building with the local university, University of West Florida, up there in the Panhandle. I know it should be part of Alabama, but it's not. It's actually Florida. We took the Myers Briggs and we were sitting in a, in a room like this in a very large setting with teachers all around. And we put the results of our Myers Briggs in front of us so that I couldn't see it, but everybody else could see it. I'm an ENTJ. Extrovert. Extrovert. Okay. And on and on. I'm also a thinker, but I'm also judgmental. So I learned about myself. And then I saw an introvert across the room. It's like, no wonder I don't get along with her. <laughs> it was eye opening. Team building is important. If you expect to get a job done for a community as large as this and getting larger by the day, you need to get together as a team. And the vision of the community comes from us, but it also comes down to you. And again, this building's falling apart. I mean, clearly we're sitting in a room with the rafters are showing, basically. Um, so I think that, and again, it's disappointing these schools aren't here. You all need to do some team building and maybe Grand Manners can help with that because they're a big group of people and they've probably done a lot of team building and actually had professionals come in and help them build teams. You're not going to get anything done yeah, if you don't work together as a team. But no, we're open to do that. And as a matter of fact, uh, in full expectation that would, there would be seven board members. That's what this uh, was laid out for. Those, yeah. There's three things on here. 
one of which I speak think speaks to you, which is board function and culture, or we would do that more often. And then we wouldn't just do it once a year or for two hours or whatever that we would engage in as much as we need to. And as many people know, we have an issue now in front of us that divides us, but we are all committed to working through that, allowing the democratic process to, to take its um, to play out um, and looking to try to come together on th some of the things that you guys have talked about. Where this is not, I, I'll speak for myself, it's not a personality issue with anyone on the board, with anyone else on the board. Obviously, you can get frustrated with other people when you try to explain something and they don't listen. Um, <clears throat> and some of you have seen me more frustrated than others have seen me. Um, but you know, we are we are committed to that, and we're committed to make this work. I do, I do not want this to be a lost year. I want us to right. be able to accomplish things. That was one of the reasons why we called this, um, and we were hopeful. I think even though they're not here, they will hear about it, and hopefully they'll see that this wasn't about bashing any of them. We're not trying to do that. We don't want to do that. This is about focusing on the community. It's about focusing on long, long-term planning. And, and I think when you say last year, um, you know, I, I, I think it's important. To, it's a lost year for everyone, right? It's a yes. lost year for not just the seven of us, but us as a community, okay. right? And there are a lot of things we have to deal with right now as a board. This being obviously the top of the list. We went through the consent agenda yesterday. We're an aging community. We're hitting 30 years. Year, um, things are falling apart at, at an accelerated rate. Not you, but just naturally from neglect. And then, we, yeah, we've talked about some uh, some upkeep that wasn't done correctly in the last, you know, four to eight years. There's a lot of things, obviously, the master plan of communications. A lot of things that we need to deal with and get in front of and be thoughtful about. And there's a lot of work to do. There is, and and again, I, and to the point about the Myers Briggs thing, um, you know, I think we're we're open to doing it, but. Candidly, if you're going to leave the room after you take it and then learn nothing from it, right? Then what's the point? But and that's not a larger discussion. So I, I don't, I don't know how to solve that. <laughs> yeah, but it, unless you know what a, a, someone's personality is, yeah, and what what they're where they're coming from. I mean, it really it was eye opening and it really really worked. And the university <clears throat> helped us to get along. Um, and they they were kind of like the management team because they oversaw everything. Yeah. And and came yeah. in and and. You know, if we needed guidance, we would ask them questions. And I, I think that using grand manners in that way is important. But also, I agree that we need a, a, a somebody to come in here and look at the community, whether it's, you know, a community developer or whether, you know, somebody to say, OK, this is where you should, you know, focus number one. And again, this building, I think, is, is should be number one on the list. Yeah, and the, the other point I want to make is, um, you see us united tonight, but uh, we we do have different thoughts and approaches, and we yeah, can talk just amongst the three of us. But yeah, this is not a lot. three thing. Yeah, Charles and I can attest to that. <laughs> there are things we agree on. There are things we disagree on. This, well, anyone who was paying attention last year knows that Charles and I both worked really hard to get in a position to work together this year, and so you know it 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 is not easy. We're not here to to be friends. We're here to work for the community uh, as a collective group, which is a board of seven. At the end of the yeah, day. yeah so, absolutely. So is. again, I think we've had some good conversation about the. Four Are you trying to end the meeting? No, I'm not trying to end the meeting. I'm just saying I think we acknowledge the right. the, the second okay. elephant in the room. Plus, let's. I, I would just recommend we move on. Joanna. Two other questions. Oh. Okay. I actually had a comment just talking about low hanging fruit. What Heather. And have said about what's going on with parts and rec and, and things of that sort. At the last parts and rec meeting, which was the last meeting, we did talk to Nikki about the volleyball courts and how they're being uh, monopolized by uh, two groups, right? But we found out in scheduling that Saturday and Sundays are completely booked between the two groups. And so families don't have time yeah. to go in and just play volleyball. So Nikki was going to look into that and hopefully that'll, you know, follow through. 
Um, and with the basketball court, we instituted a adult session on Tuesdays and Thursdays only for two hours because we were finding out that these adults, whether they're residents or not, they're supposed to be residents here before guests of anything. They were throwing off the kids off oh, the yeah. court. My son got pushed and physically pushed off the court. Right. right. And so they were like, well, we can't have them on the court because then we can't play full court, blah, blah, blah. So, you know, they're only supposed to be there on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Mm -hmm. full court after 5.30 because they wanted early release. That's full 30. They need time to play mm -hmm. and get all this energy out. So hopefully that'll help. Hopefully we'll get park monitors there maybe just to see what's going on. Wednesdays are supposed to be clear for kids to go out and play milk. Yeah. They also just implemented two days a week that's supposed to be kids only, and they're going to start our kids to leave. Yeah, I'm part, I'm part of that. Yeah. 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 Okay. So with Mike Mata, yeah. Yeah. Because so, yeah. sure we don't want anyone getting, you know, and if you need to play half court, they can play half court so the kids can play the other court half. So. No, and then that's what's special. You know, just, you know, I coached Liam for flag football, and yeah. we have the first two fields when we get led on. You know, we're warming up on the third field, five feet on, just warming up, stretching. And one of your park miners goes screaming at us to get off. You didn't pay for this part of the field. So I mean, all that money again invested in it. And us residents can't even use it. You treat it like it's, you know, so it's just those little dynamics of all those things about our fields and all our athletic facilities are so frustrating for a lot of us residents. Because again, we have to your point, so many kids, teenagers, I have four, three stepkids and my son that are out there using the facilities, right? And it's it, it's tough. So I, I want to. These are all great. And I want to go back to the, the parks and rec thing too, and, and the comment made in the April meeting. Talk about respect um, beginning of this meeting and the, the comment made in April about we ignored the decision. I, I want to talk about that because I think that that's pretty important and I think probably all align on this. Um, it, it's a two way street, right? Respect, it really is. And um, I, I, that's very frustrating and moralizing in the meeting. Um, why have committees? Why have volunteers? Uh, why treat them that way? Um, that was yeah. not indicative of the board's overall position. So I feel it's necessary to put a statement out around that because it was embarrassing, um, disrespectful, and it was one of the most honest answers I've heard come off that dais in a while. <laughs> <laughs> Nonetheless, I think it's important. Really choose your way of once quietly and have a way of them actually knew what's going on. Most of them. And attend yeah. the meetings. Attend the yeah. meetings, yeah. whether it's online or you know, or face to face. Um, it's really, really important because um, I think a lot of information was just never brought over from what happened at Parks and Rec. I mean, everything was lobby and lobby. I mean, there were hours and hours and hours of deliberation. Bringing people in, studying. Yeah, I brought that up last night as well because I, I said, as a board member, I'm not getting feedback from the liaison of what happened that night. I sent a report to my two committees, and everybody knows what's going on. She's being a gentle. Half of it is they were never asked. And when they were asked, it was trying to force information into a group that wasn't trying to receive it. So, so you know, to push them I know she's going to see me nice, nice, but I've got to say that out loud because I watched a lot of those meetings. Um, the other thing, too, you guys. May have noticed if you, if you uh, were at the committee at the meeting that we chose committees, is there were some differences in approach to how we wanted to um, put people on committees, how many people we wanted on committees. So, so there are differences there as well. Well, and quite frankly, sorry, there's probably some retaliation as well. Our liaison last year sort of once I asked for all the I asked for communication and it, it, I, I gave it, never came back. Person's not here today. Right. So, you know, and then so when the vote comes for this year, those people retaliate against the people that were outside <clears throat> about what happened the year before, which is abysmal. That should not happen. Corporation is illegal to do that. But here, you know, it, it helped with them. And also, just coming up with charter jet input in order to put together what this committee is going to be doing. The fact that board members just wrote it and didn't have any input from the committees, mm -hmm. I think is completely offensive and just ridiculous. Yeah. You're in it for a whole year, you know, and there should be some type of transition too. you talk about new board members coming in, you have a full year of like, I'm not sure what's going on. Let me try and learn this. There should, has to be some type of transition mm -hmm. and, you know, documentation or something like that to just make things flow a little bit easier. Go to our thing in the Heather. Um, and, and, and back on communication and what's just being said, 
there are many of us who are not on a committee but would like to see the committee or follow the committee. And certainly last year, I found it very difficult to find the time uh, to find out what time some some committees were all different times. And sometimes it just wasn't being taped or it was it couldn't not every committee was visible and and teamed or zoomed. And I really think that that's something that's important that any committee meeting should be able to be viewed by people at home. Right. Shameless plug, uh, next technology committee is uh, June 7th. <laughs> <laughs> they are all available online, right? Yeah, just for clarity, they are all available online and there are links available on the website for it to, to I mean, watch. I've had pro I haven't tried recently, but, but yes, yeah. Yeah, I know it's recent. Charles kind of said that you know you had a had you had an order from the people who raised your hand, but that was kind of more or less my comment was you know that there is a, an aspect there of like I, I don't know what's happening in the committees and to the extent that like some of that stuff can be published and made public or or even you know just communicated out as part of like the regular cadence of communications that we get would be great. Uh, and the other thing I was going to note is uh, Andrews had his hand raised online. He'll, he'll get time. yeah. Let's go. Over. Let's. <laughs> but I think too like the the. Connect, sorry, not to like different, but like the components of art, we've talked about having like workshops with them. But I think like when you have technology with, with you know, if there's a communications group eventually, like having the connectivity between yeah. these groups and talking to each other, that is board leaders on stuff because I know the discussion before that that's really important because we really operate in silos both with amenities and with our own committees. Well, and Charles, I, I spoke to Victoria about going to the uh, rec committee. So her and I already communicated about all the different committees. I know she's not. Sorry, sorry. Um, yeah, no, just to dovetail on all that. Um, and I have a, a specific ask if you're writing summaries from, you know, as the liaisons to the committees, is uh, that I'm something? the only one writing summaries. <laughs> I'm just going to, but, he, but he's shaping the rest of us. So I am. Maybe I'm I absolutely am because no, I'm not going to. And I it. certainly don't want to make more work for any of you, but because I know the hours that go into this. But um, if that was something that could be asked of all the board members to write a summary, um, it could go to accountability uh, in attending meetings as well. Yeah. You're shaping the board in your own image. <laughs> <laughs> and I look forward to the June 7th Technology Committee liaison report. <laughs> <laughs> if you probably, you'll, at probably, you'll probably text me at 631 and say, <laughs> Jill, we'll come to you and we'll come, Tony, your, your comment is good. Let's go to Andrew online. Andrew, sorry for the wait. Yeah, no, you're good. Thanks, guys. So, yeah, I guess in short, it's first, I know you guys were saying split the, the board of director meeting twice a, a month, but I think you already did it here tonight. So figure out what week, what day, and make it a permanent piece of, of the month so that there is this conversation with directors on matters across the board and even feel free to get suggestions from the community of what we want to speak about on certain things to shape the agenda and and talking on these things because i think that's important and feedback feedback's there it's great and the only way we're going to shape celebration for all of us is if we're all talking together and figuring out what we truly want so great first step tonight uh, i i think i am going to email uh the board tonight to receive confirmation when they have watched the video tonight once it's produced. Um, I know they're not here, but as far as being a director and working for the community, I would expect them to watch the, the specific workshops and other things. So uh, I'll put that out there. And when I get responses, I'll certainly share that on social media for everyone too. Um, yeah, we, as a community, we have an uphill battle right now. Obviously, the three of you are there. We appreciate your time and trying to steer the ship as best you can, even though you're not behind the, the, the wheel here. So appreciate you guys. Keep doing your job. Everyone here, we're, we're supporting you. You are hearing us and supporting us. We'll keep doing it. It will keep snowballing. We'll get more people to join these meetings from month to month, and we'll continue to, to unite the, the celebration homeowner's voice so that it will get to a point where the full board, all seven, will realize what we want, when we want it, and where we want it so we can get things done and taken care of. So.
appreciate everyone in the room there tonight and online and and for you three to to put this up and set it up and I look forward to seeing this continued on a monthly basis. Thanks. Thanks, Andrew. Uh, Joe. So I just wanted to comment again about committees because you know I'm not not spoke outspoken about it. We have a community with a lot of volunteers and a lot of talent, and the fact that we flat out are not using them or thanking them when they are used or or any of that is appalling to me. We have a gentleman who on the Facebook page went out and redesigned lot B with all of the pickleball things and whatever's that people wanted, but nobody's looking at it, like giving it any credence. Why are we not making use of the expertise that we have in our own community? Right, but, but all of this is here and we're all asking you to take our time and our talents and we want to make the community better for all of us. So, I don't know, what the hell, guys? <laughs> well, and, and, and some of us do that. I, mean, I went to Greg last year, about, I told you about the parking and stuff, and Greg will come up with the sheriff, I'll see what kind of sheriff, for a volunteer program. So I said, I'll go around in my neb and put little cards on people's cards and stuff. Right. But there are concerns about getting attacked, or right? so he hooked me up with the sheriff's department. So some people will do things, but again, I think people need to be transparent about that. And let people well, be as somebody on the dog park committee, I can tell you all of our meetings, because we struggled to find a room, they were all online. And you know, we did on occasion have people join us from the community who had interest in the dog park. The only time we saw our liaison in over a year was when he showed up to tell us they were going to sunset the committee. And oh, by the way, figure out your goals for the next year. That was it. So that wasn't me. No, it was not. <laughs> it was ironically somebody who didn't bother to show up tonight. So, so Lauren, I know we did the. Um, Park subcommittee, mm -hmm. right? Which is kind of like an un understudy of like the park phrase, but that's a good way to say it. Yeah. I think just popping in my head. I don't know why. So we can't. Yeah, it's a training. Right. It's training. yeah. It's the it's it's your bench strength, right? It's, you know. So what type of? I guess that would be just a board resolution okay. in order to do that to the committee structure if we wanted to, because we do. Again, we have several. Volunteers who um, someone posted on social media that they applied for two committees that didn't get appointed. Yeah, so we, it's like we discussed uh, when I think it was over email. We discussed possibly appointing two non voting members to committees so right. they could sit as they had time. Yeah, and observe and bring an alternate observe the committee yeah. members and how the committee functions and work. And we started out with ARC as kind of a test run to right. see if it would work because that was such a specialized committee and it takes an intense amount of knowledge and time to be on that committee. Okay. Yeah. So we uh, well, and the technology committee has written into their charter that they can basically deputize an expert in a technology and bring, and bring it on for a project project basis. I was just going to say, as we're near the end, I do want to go over the board development. Yes, plan. yes. Just, and I know we have just a few more questions, but we're going to kind of get to the end of it. Okay, so let's take a couple more, Tony. Yeah, so I mean, going actually to the point about the expertise in the community and things of that nature, obviously, you know, there is the opportunity to volunteer for committees and, and obviously runs for board elections and things of that, that nature. Um, and that's great. But, you know, one of the things that I kind of see is, as that was just kind of raised there is, I don't know in the three years that I've been here that I've ever really seen a, a call for like, hey, we have this particular need. Who who wants to volunteer for this particular project, this particular thing, you know, uh, and, and to that point, like that kind of raises the question to me of like, how much money have we spent as a community? Hiring outside firms to do this stuff for us that, as was just said, you know, we, we have people in the vet in the community that can potentially leverage that now I mean granted there's there's a certain degree of you know uh, uh, concern there of, of uh, you know uh, improprieties and things of that nature but like to a degree of like hey like if we can even get an initial plan of like this is what we drafted and now send it out to a third party firm to say this is what we you know if we concur that this is a good plan like you know like that you know and get that approval like that's great like that you know that that saves us money of having a Third party firm draft the entire thing from scratch. No, totally. Let's take one more, Heather. No, you're good. Okay. Anyone else before we? Yeah. Okay. 
Um, the last thing that we were going to talk about was board development. And while we can't, it is not a value to talk about these. I do want to just go through some of these things so people know what the intent was for this. Um, uh, improving meetings that focus on strategic priorities and allow time for in-depth discussion. So I think that's something that we talked about here as far as having a second meeting that's very similar to this. Uh, streamlining meeting materials that highlight the most important information so that we know what we're looking at and talking about in our 600 page board packet. Enhancing presentations that add insight to written materials. So um, adding PowerPoints and things like that where applicable. Um, changes to committee oversight responsibilities. That's the liaison things that we've, a lot of these we've talked about here collectively, so that's good. Um, more frequent opportunity for director education. Improved communication between meetings for the directors and undertake DE&I training. So those were the things that were for discussion of that. I don't think we should do that. It's not necessary at this point, but just so that it's out there on the recording of what those topics were. Perfect. Um, all right. And we're running on time. Um, next steps. I mean, we we kind of talked about that, right? It means nothing if we don't take this information, synthesize it, and try to put an action plan together. And there's a lot. Of, there's a lot. I think, yeah. That that we need to focus on. Um, even things that haven't been supposed yeah. to be discussed in this meeting. So, what are our thoughts around next steps, gentlemen? Well, I think that um, I'm very heartened by. The response that we got tonight i was questioning whether anyone would show up whether it got advertised enough etc cetera, etc cetera. um i think we need to figure out a commitment to to have this continue and if it needs to be done the same way it was done tonight um we will do it but hopefully uh it's been talked about having a workshop because we have not had one um yet this year so uh Definitely, I think that's a that's a big step. Is there anything from your perspective? Next steps? No, I agree with that. I think yeah. I think we have some of our marching orders on things that need to go and, and orders that things seem to happen. So we just need to talk about this as we do throughout time and figure out next steps. Perfect. Without adding four new huge projects for the line. Just three. Three all right. And I do want to say thank you to everyone for I said this before, but I really appreciate everyone that showed up and took the time to come. And be yeah, part thank of you very much. And, and thank you for keeping it respectful. Honestly, I think that means a lot to yeah. us. I mean, there were no obscenities thrown around, no voices raised. Everyone was was fairly polite, and and I think uh, it was a, it was a good discussion. Really, really. I have one question. Yes. Has a letter been sent to get the uh, 14 days to get the building fixed, and what's the response to that? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, because you know, rules for thee, but not for well, me. Well, uh, we'll we'll it. It'll be no, it. Right. No, it. <laughs> Lex responded 14 days. Does Kim be here by me? It was falling apart. Respond? It was, but they called him on an extension. Yeah. It's going to be. That's fine. I wish good. you know what that is. Because we have to give it. Can I make a suggestion to you guys? Is I mean, as a board of seven, you're. Can you say no? <laughs> you say no. Aren't you supposed to be ice cream right now? I was trying to leave. And she said, I might as well say it. You guys are board of seven. You're volunteers. You, you, you have day jobs all in. You know, it, it's a realization as a board. You guys are not doers. You're enablers. You know, the key things you need to look at, my suggestion would be twofold. Number one, in the committees, how do you find out how to harness people? And, and, and I will say, I mean, even broad committees because you really got two. One is you got committees and one is you got staff. You know, how do you enable both of those groups to do for you as much as they can? And what are your trust points as to how much you trust staff to do things, how much you trust committees to do things, and what really needs to come back to be an inherent board function? I think, you know, it, it kind of lost in the middle of this is if I asked all seven of you what your opinions were on those things, I guarantee I'm going to get seven different answers. So you guys need to have some sort of level set there of a common denominator of how you use the resources you've got. The other thing goes back, and this is going to be fundamental, any board, the number one job is figuring out money. Because if you got money, you can figure out everything else. Figuring out how you guys go through your budgeting process, you're going to be, you know, regardless of what happens on, happens on the referendum, this building alone is going to suck this organization dry in order to be able to fix this building up. 
um, but your, your funding is going to be able to enable all the other stuff that we've talked about in here tonight. So being able to understand your budgeting process and making sure that staff does it. I mean, I know, you know, I, I had the challenge, you know, Lauren, I think you and, and Angel came in about the same time. You know, she, she's on her second full cycle of doing a budget and she's still looking through spreadsheets going, ah, crap, I didn't realize that. You know what I mean? It takes a while to absorb all the information. And quite honestly, your budget is exponentially more complicated than ours is because you guys just have more assets, more resources, more stuff. So um, figuring out as you're starting to go through your budget cycle, spending time on that, because if you can figure out money, you can figure out the rest of it. Most of our, I'm from the liaison with the finance committee, most of our finance committee is uh, new this year. And um, I have full confidence in all the voting members of the finance committee that they are going to help point us in the right direction. And and we, I mean, we've already started on budget, so. So yeah. yeah, there's a lot of consideration going into that because of things like this and whatever happens with the referendum and all the other things that we talked about tonight. So yeah, and, and I think um, on the funding topic, and I want to also address the communication from the CDD uh, last month about the invitation. Yeah. So considering the fact that under our charter, we can have two board members or the president uh, call a meeting or um, or attend or whatnot, I. I believe it's appropriate to accept the invitation to uh, at least discuss with CPG. Yeah. You have to send it to me in writing. Okay, so that will be the next step, I would say. So, it'll, so I'll send it to you in writing, so we'll... Um, sure. Not to be uh, ageist, but uh, you know, I, I do believe that two of the, at least two of the board members who aren't here tonight are, are retired. <laughs> so, so good job. Well, no, but I mean, people have lives. They got lives. I, people yeah, have lives exactly. I'm not, not, not being, you know, I get it. They have lives. Yeah. We have one more question. Yes. Yeah, I would just um, request that you hold meetings like this more often. This is so much more approachable. Um, and I think you're going to get a lot more community input from people who, you know, do have expertise in different subjects. Um, who may feel more comfortable coming forward in an environment like this rather than planning a three minute speech and presenting it at a meeting? Yep. You can have this complaint here, or you can have this complaint on back porch. Uh, yeah, <laughs> much rather. Or front porch. Or front porch. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, then I think that's that's it. Any closing comments? Anything else? Jared? No. Do we need to motion to adjourn? Yeah, or we just can't stop talking. We motion to stop motion. Thank you, everybody. Yes, thank you. Thank you.